This week, I'm heading out with the winners of the Club Marine Winner Fishing Trip with your best mate competition. Peter and Nige are mad keen fishermen, and it's my mission to get them each a fish of a lifetime. And, oh man, it was a good bite. Just boom, proper fish. That's a PB and a half. Thank you. We PB'd you straight away, mate. Oh. One of my favourite fish to catch has to be the southern bluefin tuna. And the best place to find them is Eagle Hawk Neck in Tassie. So that's exactly where we're going. Fishing is my life. It's in my DNA. From above the water and below the surface. It's who I am. Join me as I travel the world in search of the most insane fishing experiences on the planet. You got it. Oh, yeah. Big fish right there, Al. Yeah, baby. the size of it. <laughs> oh, man, that is so good. Nice job. I'm Al McGlushen, and this is Fishing With Mates. You know, I get to fish all around the world, but one place I really love is Eagle Hawk Neck. Now, I've fished here heaps of times over the years, but this time it was different because the guys at Club Marine had organised a competition to come fishing, so I didn't even know who I was going fishing with. So it was a whole new ball game for us. But you know what? We're fishing in one of the best places on earth to do it. Eagle Hawk Neck is right down the east coast of Tasmania, and not only is it one of the most beautiful parts of the world, it also has the best southern bluefin fishing in Australia. I caught my first ever barrel down here, and ever since, it's held a special place in my heart. Because not that long ago, the SBT were nowhere to be found. But over the past few years, they've come back strong. So what better place to take the new blokes and try and get them a barrel of their own? You blokes look like you need to go fishing. Oh, Al McGlashan, wow. Oh, it's good go, to finally right? meet you. Hello. Hey. Hello, yeah. indeed. That's where we're going fishing, just over there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I was just looking at that. Yeah. How good is this joint, eh? I decided to go Al McGlashan online and see what was cooking there. And uh, maybe six weeks later, I got a phone call from Club Marine in Melbourne and said my name came out of the hat. And uh, it's yourself and a mate. And I immediately thought of Nigel, because uh, we've fished together a fair bit. So have you caught bluefin? You haven't caught bluefin, have you? Never. And you have, but right. only to... Only to 25 kilo. 25 kilos, In right. South yeah. Australia. Oh, they're the little ones down there, unless they're right on the border with Victoria. Oh, I, ha I have caught albacore here before. Oh, righty -o. I think I got a dozen, about eight kilos each. Had, a, had an Ooh. absolute ball. So if we go in Albies, we've just got to get over eight kilos. Oh. Well, we, we won't oh, sit yeah. through the Albies, don't worry about that. Uh, Pete and I have been mates for about nine years now. Um, we've been on lots of trips here, there and everywhere and, yeah, I organise it, I ring him up. He just goes, count me in, we're going. All right, so how, how big has a southern bluefin tuna got to be to be called a barrel? 100. Uh, 90 plus kilos. 90 around, plus. Around 100, give or take 100. I'd, I'd go down to... Got to be a fat boy. Got to be a fishy version of me. Right <laughs> Which is probably about 100 kilos on the nose. That's bloody perfect. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow afternoon we'll be able to talk about him. All right, so there's only one thing we're going to do now. Yep. Beer. Right. Beer time. Beer, beer time. Okay. Beer o'clock. Yeah, it was beer o'clock hours ago. Beer o'clock. It's an early start to the day and it's straight down to the wharf. But you know what? This show's all about fishing with mates. So it's time to introduce some new mates to some old mates. Stewie Nichols I've been friends with for, God, decades. Ever since I came down here, probably 10 years ago now, and caught my first 100 kilo bluefin. So it was really good to introduce Nigel and Pete to some old mates and hit the water. 
Morning, gents. Oh, you're desperate for crew again, I see. <laughs> Get me good guys, eh? Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how are you, mate? Good, yeah. good to see you. Sam, how are you? Yeah, good. All right, we got Nige. Hey, Nigel, hey, welcome along. Yeah. And we got Pete as well. Hey, Pete. Good day. Welcome to Tessie. Thank you. Jump on board, boys. Come Let's on go do it, eh? First thing I looked at when we pulled up at the boat ramp was the setup that the guys had, and I knew instantly that we were on a winner. They had all the right gear, like so. I was I was bought and sold straight away. What's really exciting is that Stewie'd been catching for the weeks before there'd been no fish, so I'd been nervous about this trip, going, "Mate, there's no tuna. They haven't arrived." The day we arrived, he hooked a barrel and he got some schoolies that were all 30 kilos. Now, normally, schoolies are just 15 kilos. So these are 25, 30 kilo fish. These are good fish. So you win a competition with us. I wonder what second prize was. <laughs> I never found out. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be something nice. But... We get into the lanterns, which I reckon has to be one of the most spectacular spots to fish. You've got these massive sheer cliffs in front of you and you're trolling right up against. You've got these pillars coming out of the water. You've got these gaps in it. Like, it's just amazing country. And you troll right along the edge of it and it's just, you know, there's seals there, there's gannets flying around, there's albatross circling around. Like, the whole country, it's just spectacular down here. And you try and explain to people that, that don't go fishing, they go, it's not just about catching the fish, it's the country you do it in. And I'll tell you what, there's few better places than Eagle Hawk Neck. So who's on strike? He's going up first, Pete? Oh, well, he hasn't caught one. Oh, he hasn't caught one. Oh, we better give Nigel a shot then. Yeah. So we've trolled around the edge of the rock, come around to the eastern edge where there's a bommy. Yep, got him on. Selwood gets the first fish of the day. Yeah. Coming up, the boys find out there's more than just bluefin in these waters. Oh, you mongrel thing. Just a big guess, So who's on strike? You can stand up first, Pete? Oh, he hasn't caught one. Oh, he hasn't caught one. Oh, we better give Nigel a shot then. Yeah. So we've trolled around the edge of the rock, come around to the eastern edge where there's a bommy. Yep, got him on. Selwood gets the first fish of the day. Yeah. Nigel's on it because he never caught a bluefin. I'm going, mate, don't worry, it's 100% bluefin. You don't catch anything but bluefin here. There's no bycatch. So, mate, didn't take long to get your first tuna. Uh -huh. You win the trip, he catches the tuna. What's wrong with that? We're a great team. <laughs> yeah, well, there is bycatch. There's albacore. Bloody great big albacore. Oh, they're bringing him up to the top. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. albacore. Seal. Yabby. Yep. And I didn't tell him about the seals either, did I? Because he's hooked up, he's fighting it, and then all of a sudden his albacore seemed to grow a whole lot and get really hairy and have a big set of teeth on it. Oh, you mongrel thing. What an introduction to Tassie. Lost his fish straight away, sealed. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> what a blow. Bloody seals. How sad is that? You know you hooked up with something when it pulls line, and then, you know, when that seal took over, it was even worse. So <laughs> I thought it was a real big one, but anyway, it was big and brown. Well, I just started off, you fed the bloody seals, mate. Yeah, no good. Oh. I, th I thought it was too easy, and then it took yeah. off, and it, obviously, when the seal grabbed hold of it, I thought we had something decent. So anyway, hard luck. You know the funny part, though, you catch an albacore in here. Yeah. Like we said before, is there any bycatch? Nah, you won't nah. catch anything but bluefin. Did oh, it and myself. albacore. <laughs> Did it to myself. So we're fishing around, we keep fishing, we're working the area, and Stewie turns around and drives back into a spot called the Lanterns, which is the rocks, back into the shore. And as we're going in, got him on again. This time, Pete, you're on. Big danger this time. Oh. Pete's fighting this fish, and Pete's only caught bluefin to 20, 25 kilos, I think it is. He wants a bigger fish. So this one's screaming off, it's going down, it's playing up, he's hanging on. Bring it up. You're not going to believe it. It's a bloody albacore. You know, it's because we said it, right? You said, as soon as we said, oh, no, it's no bycatch. Yep, albacore. Albacore. 
But I'm not talking a little albacore, because albacore are like this. This thing is like that. It's an absolute stomper. He's a nice albie, yeah. That's an albacore. Look at that. That's a PB and a half. Hang on, we better get a photo. We PB'd you straight away, mate. So he's come down to get his PB bluefin, but he's already ticked off a 15 kilo albi, so he's already got his PB. It's just the wrong species. All right, now yeah. we're going to get a bluefin. Get a bluefin. Get a bluefin. You're still going to catch your first one. You just donate to seals so yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nigel donated that for me, so down. Seal feeder. <laughs> Bloody gold. But uh, remarkable, really, to get an albacore that close to, to the bank, that's for sure. Um, the others that I've caught here, they, they were on the shelf, just inside the shelf, which is about 14 nautical miles offshore here. So when you're pulling lures around, you never know, you know. I've pulled lures around at Port Stephens for yellowfin tuna and ended up with the biggest and best black marlin. Well, you know, there's a big change coming, a big sou'wester. Now, normally, He'd be scared by it. But for down here in Tassie, hey, it's offshore because we've got these cliffs to sort of hide under, but it actually fires the tuna up. So different New South Wales, all we want is dead flat and sunny. Down here, the rougher the better, Stewie tells me. how it does this here. It's just one minute, it's nice, and then the next, it's screaming. And now, it's time for a big tuna. It's not going to get any colder, is it, Stu? It'll be all right, yeah, yeah. Says the bloke is in shorts. I'm already rugged up. I've got thermals on underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so we're all huddled in the cabin of the boat, trying to keep out of this weather, and. Then we're trolling along and Stewie said, oh, let's do another roll down there, another run. And we're going down there and we're all standing there shivering in the cabin and the next minute this blue thing comes up behind it and eats the, the long lure. There was just a big round bald head behind it, just coming up behind it. And it came directly straight behind it and just ate it and just swam down. It didn't tear a heap of line off, but then when he finally thought, found out that he was hooked, it took off. That was a barrel, boy. That was a good one. And I seen him in it. That was a good boil. Coming up, can Nige land his first ever barrel? Long night. We've been on the hunt for a bluefin all day and Nige has finally hooked himself a barrel. Oh, man, it was a good bite. Just boom, proper fish. Now it's just landing it. So all of a sudden, this fish just realises, oh, I don't want to be hooked up. I don't want to be a part of this deal. And the little Shimano just goes, Aah! just starts howling. Like, I love that feeling, just screaming. I knew he was going to do that, <laughs> by the way. Nige just hanging on like this. He's got the gimbal on. We're into the harness for this puppy. This is a proper fish. 63 metres of water, and we've got a bit of... just a tad of wind just to make it a little bit more complicated on it, just to make it a bit harder for us. I'm fighting the fish. It's trying to... The wind's trying to blow me hat off. It's just... Yeah, everything's happening. How good is that? We came for this damn thing. Come on, mate. To try to keep line on the reel with these big fish, they do circles and there's that much slack line at times, you've got no feel on the fish at all. You just can't keep up with how, how they do it, like. Thought we were under control. All the pressure was off. We were just putting line back on the reel and then it happened. It just fell off. No good, guys. Pull the hooks on him. We're one fish closer to a barrel. Oh, we're getting closer. Little meridian. I felt it pull. Did ya? Uh, it was pretty disappointing, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to give up. I, I knew we'd be able to have another chance. So yeah, I took it quite well. Oh, so close. 
Yeah. That was a good one to try and start on. It was a good warm up. Oh, oh well. That's it. That's vision. We're getting closer. Oh, So you know what? It's the fish you lose that bring you back. Not the ones you catch, the fish you lose. And for Nige, almost instantly, as soon as we've lost, wound the gear in, right, put the gear back out, let's go. Not even a question. So we're trolling around the same area where we spotted the barrel. Because I really want Nige to land one today. But the weather. You've gone from howling gale force winds, rain, to the sun shining, and it's a glamour day. But you know the problem with a glamour day? It is the best day to go fishing, but not catching. Like, it's great. You get to see, you know, those massive cliffs that stand right up there that go, you know, 300 foot up. You've got all this amazing scenery, but you don't catch fish. After a few hours of cruising around, without a single bite, we start to head back in. But then the wind changed. Like it's gone from howling and then all of a sudden it's sunny again, then it's howling again. In Tasmania, you expect four seasons one day, and I guarantee you'll see four seasons in one day. If it didn't snow, I would have been amazed. So we're back into it, the wind's howling, it's doing these willy willies that's whipping the sea up. Pretty specky country, you know, when it's doing that to you. And you just keep trolling, and then all of a sudden, literally on the exact same spot, ah, same lure goes off again. Ah, you don't. Nigel's on it again. Pretty sure it was still Pete's shot, but I'm not sure about that. He's onto it this time. I've never seen such a determined look on someone's face. I'm gonna get this fish if it's the last thing I do. All right, have you got your bluefin this time? Coming up, will Nige be able to get this one to the boat? Well done, mate. That's a good fish. After dropping his first barrel, Nige has hooked up again to what could be his first ever southern bluefin. I've never seen such a determined look on someone's face. I'm going to get this fish if it's the last thing I do. All right, have you got your bluefin this time? I felt this one and I thought, right, this is it. This fish is coming in, you know. I knew we were going to get this fish. It couldn't go. The only thing that scared me was the seals getting me again. Oh, he's all right. Nice blue fin. We get him up beside the boat. We're thinking about letting him go and it's like, no, nah, you know what? We're going to turn him into dinner. Stewie needs some. He lives down here, but he still wants a blue fin. Well done, mate. That's a good fish. Get it up, no questions with a gaff. Sam's only a young fella at 16, but he's straight into it. Lifts it straight over the side. That's the one, mate. Well done. Well done. Nice fish too, eh? Oh, it was a great fish. Oh, I just, I was a bit gobsmacked, actually. Yeah. Well, you got your southern bluefin. Yeah, finally. You let a few go, but you got a nice one out of that. Yeah. And that's a good fish for here, Stu, isn't it? That's it's, a ripper fish. Yeah, like normally yeah. they're smaller yeah, ones. They're good schoolies. Yep. Yep, beautiful. They're fantastic, aren't they? Look at them. They're just awesome colours. Oh, the colours. 25 kilos is my best, and he certainly matched that or bettered it a little bit. Yeah. So, good on him. And just doing this to make you suffer and feel the weight. <laughs> beautiful. Nice fish, guys. Thanks. So, with tuna, we really started to learn to look after them, especially with southern bluefin tuna, because they're so valuable. And people like Stu are real tuna champions. You know, the fish is caught put straight onto the sponge so you don't bruise the meat. And then it's bled out, it's put over the back to bleed. And then the next thing, he's cleaning it down, dressing it down, cutting up at sea, so nothing is wasted. And for me, this is a really important thing going forward because you've got to be able to look after the fish. There's nothing wrong with taking a fish, but it's a respect for the fish that you want to make sure that you utilise it. I'll tell you what, Stewie was right. He said the crap weather will bring them on. And we started with the albacore while the weather was good. And now the weather, now the weather is bloody cold. Holy crap. Now the weather's <laughs> And look at it.
Well, I really had no idea where Eagle Hawk Neck was or anything like that, and I had no intentions of coming down here. But now, since I've been down here and seen the place, can't wait to come back and give it another crack again after this trip. Dally was just like one of the blokes that fishes with us. So, you know, it was all good. So I knew there was going to be no rubbish and it was all about the fishing, so it was great. We gave it a long shot today. Oh, no, it was amazing. Such an awesome spot, you know, when you're fishing with all these cliffs around and it's just... And you're fishing right on the cliffs. You're not offshore, you're not yeah. miles out to sea, you're right... It's just in close. So, like, look at that oh. behind us. I mean, that's just staggering. Incredible. Plenty, oh. of, plenty of great scenery while you're fishing, yeah. So what an awesome day it is. You know, day finished, we've got a PB. Pete got his PB. It was the wrong one. He got a PB albacore. Biggest one I've ever seen. I think it's the biggest stews caught in years in there. Like, how good's that? Can't ever knock that. And we hooked a barrel. Any day you hook a barrel, a big jumbo bluefin is a good day. But then to back it up, and for Nige to catch his first bluefin, not a bad one too. At 25 kilos, that's the type of fish. That's a good day. You know the best part? I've got two new mates, I've caught up with old mates, and this is what fishing is all about. It's fishing with your mates. Well, I reckon it's time to go get a beer. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I always think it's time for a beer. I don't know if that's a good thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, a good, it's still a good idea. It's a bloody good idea. I like it. I like it.